So hello friends welcome back to romcart today in this video i am going to review the project elixir version 4.1 for realme rm6 785 devices which includes realme 6 6i realme 7 nanzo 20 pro and nanzo 30 4g so sorry for late upload i was quite busy however let's get started so this is the project elixir version 4.1 and in the first look you will notice the smoothness and you can see as always this rom is fluid smooth and i am using this rom for quite a long time like three to four days and you can see the battery backup is really good and you can see the active drain is only 9.57 percent which is very less than other roms and i am getting six to seven hours of screen on time with my 77 percent battery health which is pretty good so let's get started from the settings so let me show you the about phone first so this is project elixir version 4.1 as you can see and this is my realme 6 basically realme 6i and in android version you can see the c linux is enforcing which is good for security purpose the kernel used in this rom is the strombaker kernel and the elixir version is 4.1 and the android security update is of 5 february 2024 and the build date is 21st February now in the system we have the gestures and in gestures we uh, we got a lot of gesture options like double tap to check phone swipe to screenshot navigation mode and the navigation mode is basically the system navigation and the press and hold power button here you can choose between power menu and digital assistant then we have quickly open camera playback control etc we get the developer option right here and we get the system UI tuner so in system UI tuner you can customize the icons in the status bar and in the elixir updater you can update your rom directly so if you have any update that will show right here and you can directly download that update and flash that from twrp or any other custom recovery and in dirty flash you don't have to wipe anything just wipe the caches but that is also not mandatory now in the accessibility we have all the stock options there is nothing extra in security and privacy we get the fingerprint and face unlock with the screen lock and in more security and privacy options we get some extra options like extend unlock device admin apps etc then in sound and vibration we get these settings and we don't have the increasing ring volume in this rom so we miss that option that is quite useful because in the android 13 and 14 roms we get the sound bug for that you have to keep the volume below 50 percent to keep your speaker safe then we have some sound option like tap and click sounds for app volume control etc and in apps there is default apps game space and this is the same game space that we get in this app so this is basically a shortcut of the game space and in apps we have the app battery usage special app access etc and in notification we get the app notification bubbles and the conversation and sensitive notification annoying notification flash notification so in flash notification if you turn off the camera flash then if any notification comes the flash will blink and if you turn on the screen flash the screen will also blink for notification and it's good for the people who have lost their hearing ability and also if you are in any noisy area if you cannot hear the ringtone properly and notification properly then you can get to know about the notifications by the flash and screen blink so these are pretty useful options then we have the do not disturb etc the storage ui looks like this and in battery we get the battery usage battery saver and charging control so what is charging control it's basically a setting to keep your battery health good now in charging mode you get three options like automatic they are automatic schedule custom schedule and limit charging so in limit charging you can limit the charging percentage that means if you set it to 90 percent then the charging will stop at 90 percent and it works perfectly there's nothing to worry about then we get the custom schedule like if you charge your phone in night time then you can set the start time to 11 pm and the target time to full charge into 6 pm if you wake up at 6 pm or after that then it will slowly charge your device now in battery optimization you get the app control for battery optimization then we have the battery widget and in wallpaper and style we get this typical android 14 style wallpaper and style section here we get basically four to six stock wallpapers if i go to more wallpapers and elixir walls you get this eight wallpapers you can choose any of them and in random walls you get this eight 
wallpapers and in space we get these and in strange dimension we get a lot of and in unsplash we get this and like that we get a bunch of options and in solid colors we can use any solid colors and in emoji workshop i think you know what it is you can choose any emoji like if you click on edit emoji and add any emoji that will be randomized in the wallpaper and if you choose the pattern like stacks sprinkle mosaic then the style will be changed and you can also customize the color like it is on green type i can make it yellow and violet and like this so this is useful and if you click on inspire me it will make a random pattern for you and you can set that in wallpaper but we don't get that ai wallpaper option that we used to get in pixel os now talking about the shortcuts in lock screen you can set the shortcuts from these options like camera mute qr code scanner etc you can control both the left shortcut and right shortcut now in more lock screen options we get add text on lock screen dynamic clock etc and we also get the always on display schedule but that is not useful for lcd displays now in home screen we get almost similar options and we get the themed icons which is still on beta i don't know when it will be stable however it is working fine now the launcher that we get is this one i think it's pixel launcher here you get some basic options like at a glance add app icons to home screen for new apps then swipe to access google app suggestions and i kept the suggestion off and we have the search preference and if you turn on the swipe up to search then it will directly open the keyboard now let's get back to the settings in display we get the lock screen timeout smallest width dark theme night light and the dark theme and night light works perfectly fine and if i show you the dark theme you can turn on the schedule and let me show you how the dark theme looks so this is the dark theme this is not actually pitch black but the color is good and we have the night light which does not flicker because it's real MIUI 2 based drum and we have the smooth display ambient display tap to wake lift to wake so the lift to wake does not work just like other roms but the tap to wake works fine now in connected devices we get these options we can pair any new device and in network and internet we get the private dns and there is no preset option you have to set the dns manually now finally let's get to the customization center because the elixir os is well known for its customizations and we get a lot of customizations so this is the customization option first of all we get the themes now in themes we get the use custom theme option where you can set black espresso clear vivid for the dark theme then we get the headline and body font and we get a bunch of options you can see then we have the icon pack the icon shape then the signal icon style and in both these options we get a lot of styles you can see then we have the brightness slider style so the default one looks like this and if i change it to bang it will look like this and if i change it to gradient rounded bar then it will look like this and i like the rounded clip the most and in data icon style we get this settings now in lock screen we get the screen of animation they are crt and scale and we have the edge light when some when any notification comes the edge lighting will start we have the ripple effect but even with the ripple effect the unlocking speed is really good you can see although sometimes it skips the ripple effect now in status bar we get the 4g icon brightness control so wi-fi type icon colored icons icon manager battery style and in battery style we get these settings and i like the ios 16 the most you tell me what you like the most then we have the traffic indicators which is working fine then we have the clock style clocks background chip for the clock and in miscellaneous we get the advanced restart and unlock higher fps in games because of this you will get maximum fps in the bgmi call of duty like games then in game space we get this game space so here we came to the end of the settings so let's get to the performance so i have two screenshots one in the new throttling test app and one in the old one so without any performance improvement i mean any performance mods like custom kernel magic modules or any performance script i got this much throttling you can see you can see the cpu throttled 75 percent of its maximum performance and the maximum score was 156000 and the minimum was 114000 and you can see the graph is not stable at all there is a lot of 
performance drops and this is the new throttling app that i tested and this is the result you can see i don't know how to explain this but this is the result and this is the app that i tested so i don't know why the throttling test app is removed from play store when we search for throttling test you can see there is no app there is no throttling test app and i think the app i that i tested is also not there yeah it's this one you can see so this is it now talking about the stock applications we get the lineage os camera which is working perfectly fine you can see all the sensors are working basically and i have installed the gcam which i have which is also working fine you can see all the sensors are working and i have rooted this rom with magic 27 and if you did not watch the magic 27 video then go check it out and right now i have only one module that is cape mark enabler this module is used to enable the cape mark which is basically an fps meter and without further delay let's get to the gaming test so let's start the gaming test from cape mark because the game space fps meters does not work that well and first of all i will test the battle royale because my subscribers wanted me to also review the battle royale and guys this time i did not review the call of duty and i will do that also from the next reviews and the call of duty basically takes a lot of time to install and all the resources takes a lot of time and i have basic 30 mbps plan in my wi-fi so that takes a little bit of time and i don't have any 5g device in my room basically in my inventory so wait for the next review there i will show the review of call of duty so guys let's start the bgmi from cape mark so at first let's do an iron angle test And you can see currently we are getting around uh, 85 to 90 FPS. And the frame rate is quite stable. And let's jump in the in this area basically. And in the FPS settings you can see we get maximum 90 FPS but the graphic settings is maximum to balance so I basically forgot to jump So you can see the frame rate is quite good, it's around 70 fps. So you can see the frame rate is good but sometimes we get frame drops around 40 fps 40 to 45 fps now let's do an arena training So you can see we are currently getting around 40 to 50 fps it's fluctuating a lot
so in team death match we don't get more than 40 fps And guys, currently I'm not using any script or any custom kernel etc. This is all stock. So this is the frame rate in team deathmatch and it's not good. To get a better FPS you can use performance script. So guys, this is it for the gaming review. Now for installation, let's get to the recovery. So currently I am on recovery and the internal storage is encrypted. So we have to use an external storage. So first of all go to wipe, advanced wipe, select the data and click on repair or change, change file system and click on ext4 and swipe. After that go to wipe again, select the cache, change file system to ext4 now install the rom from micro sd card or usb otg and swipe and after flashing the rom and if you want to flash any additional files then flash that with the rom and after that go to data and change it again to f2fs then go to wipe again and select the cache and change it back to F2FS. Now you can reboot. So click on reboot and reboot to system. So this is basically the installation of Project Elixir 4.1 and it's quite similar to other Android 13 or 14 based ROMs which is based on Realme UI 2.0 and this installation also applicable for Realme 7, Narzo 20 Pro and Narzo 30 4G. So guys this is it for this video if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a like and if you are new to my channel please consider subscribing i will see you in the next video bye bye